Hey, Nate, have you ever thought about what kind of aliens you could meet to change your life? Horny ones. On that note, you know the scene at the end of Infinity War? Have you ever thought about what other Marvel characters Nick Fury could have called? Why no, Eric, I haven't. Be a lot cooler if you did. The bean holes, it's Eric and Nate. The bean holes, they're really pretty great. So shut up and listen to them talk. Eric and Nate. I'm Eric. Yeah, so anyway, we are talking about... <laughs> you're like, no more intro. As an intro. Let me introduce myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are talking about that chick. Aliens. Aliens. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. We're Captain Marvel Month. Uh, in this episode, we are discussing not only the ending scene of Infinity War, but also what led Carol Danvers to get her powers and what we might want to do in that situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we had a couple things. We wanted to, um, as we alluded to in, in our cold open here, uh, we wanted to talk about what heroes, uh, what other heroes other than Captain Marvel might be an exciting one uh, to us personally right. to bring into the MCU via Nick Fury's magic beeper. Right. Um, in a world where Marvel Studios do not have the film rights to Captain Marvel, let's say they're stuck with Sony or something. Well, yeah. Uh, let's say Fox. Let's say Captain Marvel's at Fox. Um, you know what? Let's say Searchlight. Just <laughs> out of some weird, weird way that that happened. Um, so, what other characters who have not yet appeared in the MCU? would Nick Fury be paging at the end of Infinity yeah, War? Yeah. So that one you want to talk about first? Yeah, let's say, okay. because that's the, a little bit more of a question. Yes. What we're going to get into after that is um, Captain Marvel, uh, Carol Danvers, got her powers from uh, kind of having her life changed by meeting Marvel, Captain Marvel at the time, in the comics. Uh, we're not sure if it, if Marvel figure, figures into... The movie, yeah, they've version. been really secretive about that. Yeah, well, it seemed it seemed like they wanted us to think Jude Law is playing Marvel, but um, what's his name? Jan Rog seems more more likely. Who's uh, sort of, I guess, bad Superman. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we'll we'll look at other. We'll talk about other things. Right. Other there have been many many comic book characters who. Their, their life was, was one way, they met an alien or got involved with some sort of intergalactic trouble and their lives completely changed. And usually leading to them having superpowers themselves. Correct. Um, that'll be later. Okay, right. so, so first. Yeah. Infinity War ended, spoilers, uh, with the world being torn apart, 50% of the population, which was just uh, confirmed animals were included as well in that. So fifty percent of bacteria. I. That's a good See, question. The whole thing is like, he wants resources increased. So then, he's going to kill half of the animals that we would want to eat. I or, guess. I guess. And does that mean half of the plants that we've been growing? Yeah, I don't know. Kevin Feige just said animals, but uh, half the world completely gone. And right as the chaos was beginning, Nick Fury had enough time before he disintegrated to pull out his pager, and it showed the Captain Marvel logo on it, which, mm -hmm. I mean, we knew her movie was going to be one of the next ones coming out, so pretty obvious. But My question is, do life model decoys count? What if that wasn't even really Nick Fury? That was just a scroll oh. pretending well, to be Nick Fury. I guess that's an option as well. But I'm talking about the LMDs that are a big part of, of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the comic books. Uh, robots and or androids or other type of synthetic uh, life forms. Nick Fury has been killed multiple times in the comics and then like the next week it turns out, nope, that was my robot. Yeah. You can't tell the difference. So That would be weird if it included. It would be very like weird tech. if it did, but... I would love it if that's how they brought LMDs into the MCU. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they've had LMDs in um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on TV. I don't think they have them in the MCU. Um, unless, like me, you totally count Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as part of the MCU. You um, should. You should. You should, and according to me, and, and, and Joss and Jed Whedon also, uh, even though they're contractually obligated not to. 
They definitely do. So what's your uh, what's your dude? <laughs> what's <laughs> uh, I was I I kept coming to to Nova. Now mm. my first thought was Adam Warlock, but to be fair. Adam Warlock, in a way, was teased at, at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah, and would, I don't think would ever be someone that Nick Fury would have any contact with. Right. So it, it was a character that, that was obviously someone who could go toe-to-toe with Thanos, mm-hmm. would, would be a good pick, um, and I just kept coming to Nova. Uh, Nova is a character. We, we, we've been introduced to the Nova Corps, um, and it would be very interesting to know that this entire time... Nick Fury has at least known about the Nova Corps, knows about Nova, and may have been in contact with him. And I think that that still, as a timepiece, could have worked yeah. as a movie with a young Nick Fury kind of getting involved with some intergalactic situation. So, uh, I, just when looking at the characters that have not debuted yet in the MCU, um, Nova just kept coming up on my list as someone who would make sense and would be a reasonable person for him to call. Well, fortunately for the viewers, I am far more educated when it comes to the vast world of comic books. Um, is, I'm not, you have, you have time on me. I, you know, you've read more comic books than I yeah. have. Um, I, I would love it for it to be Sentry. Um, do you know about Sentry? I've heard of him. I, go ahead and tell me. All right. Name. Sentry is he's basically Superman. Um, he's, he's often confused with Hyperion, and I actually myself confused him with Hyperion when we were, when we were planning what we would be talking about. We've all um, been there. I was, I was confusing him. Hyperion is like officially Marvel's Superman. Like, um, not that they've like put out press releases or anything, but, but he is a pastiche of Superman. If you don't know what pastiche means, look it up. Uh, we pastiche is going to be right here, so you know the spelling of it. Oh, we might as well put the whole definition on then. It'll Look it scroll. down. Yeah, it's scrolling right here. Um, but Sentry really ultra powerful, strong, flying, invulnerable guy. But the twist on Sentry is he is mentally incredibly unstable. He has split personalities. Where the the um, you know the secret identity is a very troubled guy. Sentry himself is is like another personality, and the Void is the opposite, like the dark personality. And um, they've done a lot of a lot of different takes on. Does on he this. talk to himself, or does he he like how Blue Beetle at, talk at to times, the Scarab? At times it'll be like that. At times it'll be like the guy is sitting in a chair and Sentry's on the other side of the room talking to him about the void and the and and um, Void's like comes in and goes, What are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um I don't I don't wanna keep saying the guy. What's his name? Bob Reynolds, I think. Just wanna check my notes. Oh, here we go. Um Pastiche. <laughs> Rob, Pastiche Robert worldwide. Reynolds. Okay. Robert Reynolds. Yeah. Um, so Bob Reynolds, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> no one calls him that though. So there'll be times where like he thinks he's been attacked by the void, and that the void is like destroying the city or something, and it's just him doing it. He's just he's going nuts. I know. So like what you see in the comic books sometimes is um, is from his own point of view. Yeah. And and. Then yeah, it's it's very complicated. Um, I haven't read every single comic, and when I'm saying at times, I don't mean like one issue he's talking to Sentry, and then the next like as a separate character, and the next issue there it's like all in his head. I mean like different versions, whether you know whether there's been you know reboots of the character or whatever. There's they different versions handle it different ways. But also, um, you kind of unfold and unpack what's going on uh, through the eyes of Robert Reynolds. Um, but the point is, this guy can like destroy the world by like farting, and and he's crazy. So perfect. <laughs> 
I want to see him in the MCU. I want to see someone who is more powerful than Thanos. Yeah. Wants to be a good guy, but is also the bad guy all the time. And and he has one personality manipulating the main personality to think that the evil personality is locked up somewhere. Because this is the they did this there's a story in the comics where Sentry was telling Robert Reynolds that the Void is locked up in a watchtower and then other people go up in this watchtower to like take out this horrible threat and it's just a chair and a mirror. <laughs> the um, threat is you. Yeah. Look um, in the mirror. So just I would love to That do would really that. mess Thanos up where he's like, What what are you sending me? I mean it's it's kind of almost like sending Deadpool in to really just confuse him. Yeah. And also, like, mess with his mind a little bit, because then that'll distract him. Yeah. So, I'm really happy that they are bringing um, another strong female character into the MCU. Yeah. But if they weren't going to do Captain Marvel, I would say a, a, a combination strong, incredibly weak, and incredibly dangerous man would just also be fun. <laughs> That sounds like a fun character. Uh, when I was going through my list of like powerful Marvel characters who, who haven't been in the MCU, uh, Galactus was on that list. And I, for a second, I thought that, that that might be funny if Nick Fury was like, hey, guy who eats planets, come over here. We got a problem. But um, <laughs> Galactus shows up and he's like, what's going on, guys? Suddenly every planet I eat is half as delicious. Uh, blame that guy. <laughs> All right, mister. Come on over here. But, uh, All right. Yeah. So, in Captain Marvel, she does, like you mentioned before, meet Marvel, uh, And it's happened to a ton of comic book characters, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, Green Lantern is, is one of the more famous ones where you just you meet an alien and all of a sudden, boom, something happens to your life. Um, who, who would you want to basically take their place in a comic book of like what situation do you want to see yourself put in where you're meeting this alien they don't have to be in trouble it could just mm -hmm. be a meetup you could be kidnapped but okay so premise is basically you're a regular you person want to be. yeah but you're you're a regular person right an alien enters your life and you're in a completely you like you realize oh the world's world. very different and right. i can have all these magic powers harry potter <laughs> I mean, Hagrid was Hergrid at one point in his life. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's Gus Johnson. Check him out. Um, but uh, yeah, um, that was a joke. I I I, I like the power. Pack. For a no, I, well, I I was. I mean, that I think he fits the bill. Hagrid's certainly alien to the Muggle world. Um, but I like the power pack. Um, that. I was just the right age when the Power Pack came out. Uh, without going into too much incorrect detail like I did with the Sentry. Um, yeah, but now you're you're basing this on something you grew up with as a kid. Yeah. So but don't mess it up. <laughs> no, but I read I read a mini series and there's been a few more. Um, but uh, as you know, Franklin Richards is a very powerful. Um, one of the most powerful figures in the MCU. He's the yeah. son of Reed Richards and Sue Richards of the Fantastic Four. Um, crazy powers. Um, he had some friends uh, that... <laughs> and they formed a pack. No, um, th this is uh, two brothers and two sisters, one family, um, that just basically had a magical horseman. She's like the opposite of a centaur. So Body of a man, head horse. of a horse... Arms like a horse, so hooves uh, doesn't. No, you didn't have hooves. Okay, so it's just like wearing one of those horse masks. Sure. Okay. So guy shows up in a horse mask and says, "Here's some powers," and they go on a crazy adventure. I hate no, when they, that happens. They go. They go on. Uh, the, this this alien shows up, uh, brings him on the ship. Anyway, it's just a family, like the, all the kids getting powers and um, and and fighting evil aliens and. I, if I remember correctly, trying to save their parents. Um, I could pull it all up on my phone again, but who cares? Yeah. Uh, it's a great... 
it, 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 it's great if you're a kid to think about like, oh, what if me and my brothers and sisters or what if me and a couple of my friends all got superpowers together and went on this adventure and then came back home and still had all these superpowers. Uh, it's kind of, I and if they ever made a movie, uh, the perfect tie-in would be Snack Pack, I imagine. <laughs> like the power Snack Pack. Because, yeah, I would like to see that. All right. <laughs> uh, the, the person... I thought about uh, Green Lantern's cool and everything. Um, I have just what's really intimidating to me is is the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, I I was a young Marine at one point in my life, which is literally the, it's Boy Scouts with it's, a Marine theme, right? So um, you're still even though you're a kid or a young teen, you're still in that military area of getting like yelled at and um, you know push ups and whatnot. I don't think I would do well in the Green Lantern Corps. I think I would be a, a massive disappointment. You certainly didn't do well in the Young Marines. Yeah, well, bringing up disappointments, uh, I kept thinking about Peter Quill. That I think... Um, now, you, you did mention some of these people do get powers. Peter Quill, in the MCU, is half... Uh, half human, half, half cold medicine. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a thing. Don't lie to me. Um... But anyway, I thought he just overdosed on NyQuil and got superpowers. <laughs> it's Peter That's Quill. Why call him Peter Quill. Yeah. His middle, his middle name is Nye. Like Bill Nye. So sure, Nye sure, Quill. sure. Keep it going. Yeah, that's a great joke. Um, so yeah, Peter Quill, abducted, kidnapped by Ravengers, at least in the MCU, being stolen for, uh, for his father. Yeah. Of course, Yondu makes the decision... Uh, I've sent a lot of people to that guy to die, and this kid's kind of cool. He's small. He can fit in the places. I, I, I think it was more, I don't want to send a kid to die, than he's cool. But I, I thought, like, <laughs> like, Yadu mentioned, or at least Peter thought, like, I think he only kept me because I can fit in small places for their for their thieving. Well, that's, yes, but, but if you really pay attention to... The character development yeah, and yeah. the revelations uh, throughout Guardians 2... It's not just that. <laughs> right. But no, I know. Um, but I, I think that's something that at least he kind of, he kind of being a little bit of a failure as a growing up in space, it's kind of worked out for him in a tremendous way. He's kind of turned his life around from a, even somebody who the Ravengers want to kill to a hero or a guardian of the galaxy. Um, and I think his life is something that appeals to me. You know, having a group of, of friends on a ship listening to old school music and just being pretty awesome driving around your ship. Uh, and of course, when I see him screw up a massive plan to save the universe, I go, yeah, I would probably make that <laughs> mistake too. So <laughs> so I, I, I could see myself uh, falling into that, into that universe pretty well. So super chill, super chill. Keep on beating. The Bean Holes. Look it up.